Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess. I'm in my garden, my trusty sidekick bear. And today I am employing the help of Sweet Maya and we are going to be sharing our tomato trellising method. Now I like to grow a lot of tomato plants. And I learned a long time ago that those little tomato cages that they sell at the store are a joke. There's no way for those to really support an indeterminate tomato plant for the entirety of a season. Indeterminate tomato plants can easily get eight to 10 feet tall. And those little cages are like three or four feet at best. So I started exploring a lot of other ways whenever I decided I wanted to grow a lot of tomatoes. And what I found was that to create your own cages out of fencing or a lot of different options that are out there for trellising a lot of tomato plants, it seemed like they could very quickly become expensive if you were growing a lot of plants. And that's whenever I decided to give cattle panels a try. I've been growing my tomatoes like this for a handful of years now. It works out really great. And at this point, whenever you consider the initial cost and how long these materials last, it's definitely a very, very affordable option. So let's take a look at this process. It's not quite tomato planting time here yet in central Arkansas, but today we're getting ready. So I have 48 foot beds. Of course, you can cut these down and do them in different sizes. And the idea is generally the same, but basically we have T posts and cattle panels in my 48 foot beds. There are three 16 foot cattle panels that run the length of the beds. And this is where we grow our tomatoes. Now, We've been doing the tomato trellis walls, is what we call them, for years now. And in the past, we've always used zip ties to hold the panels to the T-posts. And the reason why we have used zip ties is because I have reconfigured this garden so many times. And using zip ties makes things easier to change because all you have to do is clip the zip tie and then you can take them down super simply. The downside of that, however, is that the zip ties do wear down eventually. Uh, you can buy like the UV resistant zip ties that will last longer out in the sun, but we had just had regular ones and they typically end up breaking after probably two seasons out in the garden. And that's what happened with the trellis wall that we're actually putting back up today. It's just that the zip ties finally just wore down and broke. And today we're actually gonna be putting those back in with some T-post clips. That is gonna be a little bit more permanent. I mean, you can undo it, but uh, it's just going to keep that trellis there for a longer period of time. But if you're pretty sure you have your trellis where you want it, the T-post clips will keep you from having to redo the job soon and also, you know, save some waste. All right, so as you see here in this last bed, we already have our T-posts in place. They are not in a perfect line and that's okay. These are just six foot T-posts. Um, we did spray paint ours and they're all different colors just because that's how we roll. And over here, we have 16 foot cattle panels that we got at a local farm store. Um, here in central Arkansas, where I live, these run about 20 to $25 each. A friend of mine, Quebec Homestead, she's in Canada. I hear a lot of people talk about how cattle panels are very, very pricey in Canada. She has a video that I'll link below where she made some trellising out of um, like rebar, concrete rebar. And so that might be something to look into if you live in another country where cattle panels are not easily obtained. And it would work just the same. It's a metal grid material that you could put up. I, I don't think rebar is galvanized like, like cattle panels are. So the cattle panels don't readily rust, but you could always coat the rebar with something if you were concerned about that. That's right, isn't it? Rebar rusts. Yeah, it's not so. yeah, and she's had good success with that. So I will put, um, I'll put the link down below, and you can check out her video, which is really good. I'll often get asked when I talk about any of this kind of trellising if it's okay to use fencing, and we have done that in the past. We made a trellis wall very similar to this on T posts with a repurposed roll of like a five foot fencing, and it worked pretty well for beans. Like I grew pole beans on it now. The thing is, is that material is just more flimsy. And so when the 
wall got really, really full of pole beans. It ended up kind of falling over on the top. And I can imagine that with heavier plants, like if you try to do cucumbers or you try to do tomatoes or something that's gonna have a lot of weighty fruit on it, that that could potentially be a problem. So it would not be my first choice. I definitely think that the thicker gauge wire of something like a cattle panel is definitely gonna provide more support for your plants. If you're just trying to repurpose materials, you definitely can make use of fencing as long as you're not trying to put something uh, uh, that's going to be really heavy on it. This is obviously a fully customizable thing that you can adjust to make it work in your garden. So if you had eight foot beds, you can buy a 16 foot cattle panel and cut it in half and use half of it to go the length of your bed. Uh, if you have longer beds like I do, you can use whole cattle panels or, or multiple panels to go the entire length of your bed uh, to make one nice long row, which I really like. Basically, what you need to know is that you're gonna need three T-posts to support one 16 foot panel sideways. Minimum. On minimum, yes. If you cut your panel in half and say you're using like an eight foot segment or even smaller, a six foot segment, obviously you're gonna need two T-posts to hold that up. We put our T-posts on these walls eight feet apart. And while you can go closer together than that and provide more support, I would not go further apart than that because once these are weighted down with lots of food, uh, you definitely want them to stay upright. So I would not try to stretch the support any further than eight feet apart. I agree. All right, so Jeremiah and I are gonna go and grab this panel and bring it up to these T-posts, which we've already driven in. We use a T-post driver, it makes the job a lot easier. If you're gonna be driving more than a few T-posts on your property, it's worth the 25 or $30 investment uh, to go ahead and get those T-posts in. And they're sunk every eight. We actually put these T-posts in like two seasons ago and they haven't budged. These T-posts are driven down about 18 inches into the soil with the bumps facing outwards. All right, so we are using these T-post clips to hold the panel to the T-post. And Jeremiah can show you guys here how that works. Well, they have this, one of my favorite tools for the homestead, the T-clip bender. That's it. This. Jeremiah like preaches the gospel of the T-clip bender regularly. No, I don't spend half a day putting T-clips on either. <laughs> Like Eight dollars a tractor supply. <laughs> one of the best tools on this farm. There we hook one side. One bend. There you go. Now you can see on our older walls where these are held on with zip ties, which was is what we've always used in the past. And as you can see here, we just hung that panel over here, just like this one, and it spans over three posts and it goes a little bit long and then we go ahead and attach the next panel by overlapping the two and we've zip tied them together we'll probably use some wire to attach them now to make it a little more permanent and then we overlap here and the next panel so now i want you to notice that we hung this panel about 20 inches off the ground i don't measure it i usually eyeball it you know roughly close to two feet from the from the soil is where I want the bottom of this trellis to be because I'm I'm putting tomatoes here and tomato plants grow pretty sturdy up until they're you know 24 to 30 inches tall and since indeterminate tomatoes can get eight or nine feet tall easily I want as much trellis space up high I don't need it down low if I were to put these directly on the ground I would only have four feet of trellis whereas by putting them up high I have six feet of support and usually my plants climb quite a bit higher than this you could hang them even higher but you would probably have to do some sort of um, intermediate support in between you know because your, your plants would start falling over before they reach the bottom of the trellis if you hung them much higher than this so this is a great way to grow but I want to talk to you a little bit about the process of growing on these because it's not just building this and knowing that it's going to provide support but it's also going to affect how you plant and prune and actually grow your tomatoes so if you were not intending to prune your tomato plants at all you just wanted to let them fully bush out and grow uh, completely unhindered I would probably plant them at least 30 inches apart from one another on a trellis wall like this 
And doing it that way would give you support for about seven plants. So if you're spending $25 on your panel and then another $10 for three T-posts, the first year you are paying about the same price for this as you are for tomato cages. But this is gonna work better and these materials are gonna last a long time. So the second year you're saving money, those tomato cages, they end up, they're welded and they end up kind of popping apart. They're hard to store, they're kind of a pain in the butt and they just don't work that well for supporting tomatoes anyway. So this is going to make financial sense just in one or two years of supporting tomatoes that way if you're not pruning your tomatoes. Now, now, if you are pruning your tomatoes down to a single stem, which I have a video about pruning and I have a video about transplanting tomatoes and about growing tomatoes, so I'll put all of those down in the description below. But if you do prune, you can put your tomatoes closer together. Um, if you put them 18 inches apart and you don't prune, you're not going to have enough airflow and you're going to end up with disease. That's not a good that's not a good thing and then gives places for pests to hide but by pruning side stems off down to a single or a double uh, leader you can put your plants closer together and the way I do it is on these trellis walls I put my plants about 18 to 22 inches apart and uh, I do prune them down which means that I usually plant uh, between 10 and 12 plants per cattle panel and that uh, therefore I'm getting more value out of my garden space and out of the materials because I'm getting to plant more in that space. Now there are two questions I get asked more than any others when it comes to planting tomatoes on trellis walls like this and that is can I plant on both sides? So what people are asking is can I plant one plant here on this side and one plant here on this side? And the answer is no. Uh, this is not gonna provide enough airflow because essentially that's like planting two plants right next to each other. When they come up, they're gonna be all next to each other and uh, all in each other's space and it's going to again hinder the foliage staying dry, it's gonna hinder airflow and that's not gonna yield a good result. So how you wanna do this, it doesn't matter if you pick one side or directly underneath or the other side. I usually kind of do it off to one side and I do my plants 18 to 20 inches apart, something like that. And I go all down the row. Now the other question that I'll get a lot is can I do two walls in the same bed? So let's say you have a four foot bed. Can I put a trellis wall here and a trellis wall here? So essentially just growing two rows of tomatoes down the same bed. And my answer to that would be yes, I think that you could. Um, that's what I did in my high tunnel last year. And it worked well. However, with a high tunnel, it was protected from rain. Therefore, that eliminates a lot of that fungal uh, blight type stuff. Uh, if you are going to do that and grow two tomato walls down the same four foot bed, I would just make sure that you are pruning. I would not do that planning on letting plants bush out unless perhaps you staggered the planting. So like this wall, the, the plants were kind of like staggered from this wall. Basically, you just want to make sure air can get through there. And by doing two walls, if they are covered solid with tomatoes, uh, that back side is going to be more prone to sickness because it's not going to be uh, receiving airflow. So you could, the reason I don't is because I have space to spread them out and eliminate eliminate any issue with airflow. I also live in a very hot and humid place and it might not be nearly the issue for you if you live in a place where it stays pretty dry. I want to point out when it comes to growing on something like this, uh, tomatoes are not natural climbers. So just keep that in mind here at the beginning. Um, as soon as they get tall enough to reach this, you are going to need to fasten them some way to the trellis and the way that I do that is when the main stem here gets all the way up to this I take something they make this little uh 
high tape that's really good for tying tomatoes off. It's really easy to just break off and pull the plants off at the end. Or you can use twine or strips of old cut up t-shirts or fabric or something like that. Something soft that's not gonna cut into your plant. But you're just going to take it and very gently tie a loop around your plant and around the, the wire of the trellis. And as they grow, you're gonna have to come back and retrain this main stem to your trellis. You don't have to tie the side stems. That's not gonna do any good. But by doing this, it keeps your plant upright. Tomatoes, if left to their own devices, they'll actually fall over and grow along the ground. And the little hairs on these, if you start noticing when your plants get more mature, they'll get all these little bumps because they're trying to put off more roots because the main stem of a tomato, if left, left in nature, is gonna root all along the ground and it's gonna shoot all of these branches up. Um, and that's not a great way to keep your your tomatoes if you want if you want to be able to keep them because obviously they're on the ground they're in they're in the wet and they're exposed to pests we grow them upright so that we can keep the fruit blemish free and uh, tasty for ourselves they don't want to do that so we're actually forcing tomato plants to grow in a way that's unnatural for them and so you do have to tie them to the trellis or they're always gonna be trying to get back down to the ground so they can grow more root. Now, lastly, these trellises can be used for other things. These are not just tomato trellises. I prominently use them for tomatoes because we also have the arch trellises that I like to hang cucumbers and uh, noodle beans and personal melons and all of that on those because it's just so beautiful when they're hanging over the rows. So typically on the trellis walls like this, I do things that don't get as tall but you can totally do cucumbers or beans or melons or anything that likes to climb on a trellis like this. And if you're wanting to support plants that maybe aren't climbers that just bush out and need a little bit of support, you can put this down to the soil and grow a row of peppers or eggplants or anything at all. Either way, it's a great option to add beauty and functionality and structure to your garden. And over time, because the materials are so resilient. Uh, it really does save a lot of money. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.